and it's good to be here with you all. Um, so we're going to pray in. Ami, can you pray us in? Hallelujah. Disclaimer on today. Today is going to be a very long day. Uh, I'm kind of estimating about two hours with maybe 30 minutes or 15 minutes. So if you have to leave, uh, do so. Uh, but just know that you can always pick back up. Uh, we are recording live. And so you can always get on YouTube, Instagram, or the Facebook and follow up and pick back up. Um, but uh, we only have three more days, three more services this semester. So we're going to have to kind of be putting on a lot this, these last couple of sessions together because we got to kind of finish up here so that next semester comes, you already know the information and we can go a lot deeper. Okay? Um, so we got one. We want to kind of keep ourselves afloat here and stay attentive. Um, if you have questions, please ask them. Uh, I already said I already estimated the time about two hours, give or take thirty minutes added or um, subtract. So you know it's gonna be a little long. Um, if you need to move around, trust me, go right ahead. I am okay with that. It's a little cold in here today, so. You're going to be a little chilly for a little bit, but hopefully the Spirit of the Lord prayerfully will begin to warm us up in the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So last time we talked about uh, the Apostle, right? And the awful, we, we introduced the fivefold, right? And the fivefold is what? In order, give them to me. Without looking. Apostle. Everybody. Apostle, prophet. Give them to me. Come on. Apostle, prophet, evangelist. Up together. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, preacher. No. Come on. Again from the top. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, teachers and pastors. That's out of order. Again. Apostles, prophet, evangelists, pastors, teachers. In union. Oh, go ahead again. That's how. Okay, y'all got to count. Um, so, so we talked about what fivefold, which are the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, right? Yes. Now, so we see here, praise the Lord, that we, we on last Monday we discussed really the order of the church and you know the foundation of the church. We was in and out of Acts and. Praise the Lord. So we didn't really go in depth of to what the apostle um, spiritual authority was in the church and that mantle and that office and what comes with that office. So right now we're going to really get into that. We're going to really dive deep into that. So I need I need um, I need y'all to get ready to go to these scriptures. All right. So I need somebody to get Genesis twenty eight. And 17. Okay. I need someone to get Ezekiel 48 and 32. Okay. 48. 48 and 32. Ezekiel 40, 32. Someone said they got it. Okay. Someone to get Psalms 107 and 18. And Psalms 118 and 20. So Psalms 107, 18. Psalms 118 and 20. Okay. Both of them. Yes. Yeah, okay, cool. That's what I was kind of hoping. <laughs> okay. And then I need someone to get Matthew 7 and 13. I'm sorry, 2 Samuel 18, 24. So if someone gets 2 Samuel 18, 24. Not, don't do Matthew 13 yet. 
2 Samuel 18 and 24. Okay. Then I need someone to get Revelations 21 and 13. No, we're going to, I'll do 20 because I'm going to do 21. I'll do, it's going to be the whole book, the whole chapter. So I'll do Revelation 21. Okay, but I need someone to get, um, I need someone to get Job 38. Actually, I need somebody to get Matthew 7 and 13 and Job 38 and 17. Who wants to do those two? You said Matthew what? Matthew 7 and 13 and Job 38 and 17. Okay, who got that? Matthew 7 and 13 and then Job 30. 38 verse 17. Okay. All right, y'all ready? Let's yes. get into it. Go ahead with the first one, Genesis. Genesis 28, 17. Jesus is afraid and said, I dreadful is this place. This is not over but the house of God, and this is the day of life. Okay, so he said, how what? Uh-huh. How dreadful is this place? He was afraid. And he was afraid, he said. How dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God. This is the what? The gate of heaven. Okay. So I want to. Set over? I said we can do it. Where, Where you are set over. over. Where you're set over? Yes. Or a person out of interest. What do you think? And by the blood of Simeon, from the east side unto the west side, Issachar a portion. And by the blood of Issachar, from the east side unto the west side, Zebulon a portion. And by the blood of Zebulon, from the east side to the west side, Gad a portion. And, the, and by the blood of Gad, the south side and southward, 
the border shall be even from Tamar unto the waters of Strife of Kadesh and to the river toward the great sea. This is the land which ye shall divide by lot unto the tribes of Israel for inheritance, and these are their portions, and said the Lord God. And these are their goings out of the city into the north side, 4,500 measures. And the gates of the city shall be after the names of the tribes of Israel. Three gates northward, one gate of Reuben, one gate of Judah, one gate of Levi. And at the east side, 4,500 and three gates. And one gate of Joseph, one gate of Benjamin, and one gate of, Dan, one gate of Dan. And on the south side, 4,500 measures, three gates, one, side, one gate of Simeon, one gate of Issachar, and one gate of Benjamin. And uh, that was it. Yeah, you said it verse 13, right? Yeah. yeah. No, verse 33. You said it verse 33? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, does that give you some help? Yeah. The entry point. Huh? The entry point. Okay, what else? Access to the city or access or access. You have a prince, right? And they have a seed. Alright? They have a seat in the core, right? So you have a throne. Okay. And then you have Seat 
represent, if you look at them, the, the court of a kingdom, right? And you look, if you go into the court of a king, you will see seats, but you also understand that those seats represent the land and territory that they belong to, right? And they also represent uh, the type of authority that this person has. Is this a duke? Does this duke sit here? Does the prince sit here? Because the seats represent, and a lot of times in different cultures, the seats will have emblems or symbols of the, the territory or the, uh, the tribe that was there. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What did we just read in Ezekiel? He said this. What did we just read in Ezekiel? Okay. Okay. So what was on the gate there? The names of the tribes. Okay. So that means that each gate was a was a tribute to what? Each one of the twelve tribes. Right? Okay. So you so the seat is where so when we talk about the prince. So right now, and we use this like the, the apostle is like what would be like the prince over here. Okay? You see what I'm saying? Okay, because he's made us what princes and what royal priesthood, right? right? Okay, so the apostle will operate in the role of the prince, but he will sit in a seat that what is not equal to the throne, but just a little bit below it. Right. But he has more power and more respect than the dukes or someone else that's below him, because he, because a lot of times what happens is. There will be a platform underneath, right? Mm -hmm. And the king and the queen will be on the same platform. Right. Now, in some instances, they, they will share, the family will share the same platform, right. or the prince will be a little platform off. Like he, he'll be downward just a little bit. But his seat, what they call the same platform, the seat variation, the size of the seat different than the size of the throne. The throne is the biggest one because it represents you have all authority and power. You have all jurisdiction over all these lands. You see, you're set above them. You get what I'm saying? So the apostle is set above as a rulership of the church, right? The head, right? Okay, so so each, so what we're talking about here, what we're really looking at right now is the gate. So where does the gate come in then? In this. Because I'm working and people can work myself back. Okay. Because you have access, right? right. So we have access. So if we look at Ezekiel, if we go back to um, Genesis. Genesis chapter. Go back to Genesis. And he was signed. He said he was a produced chapter 28, verse 17. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. If you read that up, someone read, uh, go and read verse 15.
He had recognized that what he said, he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place? This is none other than the house of God. What is he talking about? He wasn't in a natural house. He was not, he wasn't, he wasn't in a natural house. He was not in a synagogue. He was not in a temple. Temples hadn't been created yet. But then he said what? And this is the gate of heaven. Go back to Ezekiel 48. The gate. He said the gate of heaven, right? He was outside. Uh, Jacob was outside wrestling with the angel. The angel what? Said that the Lord said what? That he, Daniel was going to be changed to Israel. Mm -hmm. Right? He made a covenant with Israel that day. And then guess what? He woke up out of that vision. And then he recognized that what? He was in the presence of God. And that the heavens had opened up towards him. And that what? God was in the midst of him. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then Ezekiel 48 says, and starts talking about the 12th tribe of Israel that came from whose womb? Jacob's, what? Came from his loins, does he say? Yeah. Came from his loins. <laughs> right? Right. These 12 tribes came, uh, these sons came from his loins. And each tribe represented a plot of land represented a territory mm -hmm. that was carved out to them. If you look at the map of Israel, when they were in uh, under King David and before the split happened between Israel and Judah, when there was one nation, the 12 tribes had a plot of land, each 12 of them. Right. So the gates represent what? Access, right? right? So in the court of the king, in the court of the king, each seat is attached to each gate. Let's just go do that right now, okay? Each seat had a gate. Okay. Right? 
the righteousness shall what? Enter. So that means God has to be. Right. And we saw that being heaven, right? Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says what well, heaven is is strong. Okay? Right. Okay, so heaven is strong. So the gate of heaven, hallelujah. So we have the gate of heaven here, right? right? So the gate of heaven, heaven is above all things, right? Heaven is above all, and above him there is nothing. You can't go above it. That is the pinnacle. That is the top. That is the absolute. That is that is what is absolute. You can't go above it. You can't go around it. Right? right. Because that's what God is. Right. And like and like I said before, it's like this. God, the spirit world, or the eternal, is what? Has no limit, but his limits is God. It's like this. This is God, right? right. And in between is infinity. But infinity has a boundary. And that limit is gone. Right. Anything can fit here. It'll never stop going. Right. But it can never go outside of God. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So everything in between God is life. And death. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the gate of death has a seat in the court. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So the gate of death. So that means death has a seat. And we see the gate, we see death, the angel of death coming. What? And what? Exodus, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Who sent it, though? Who sent? Now, now uh, the reason why I didn't put this scripture in is because I assume that we all know mm -hmm. this, this, uh, this account in Exodus when. God told when God told Moses to tell the people to do what? To write to, to, yeah. to put blood yeah. on. Yeah. Okay, there's an angel of death, right? Okay. okay, so death has a seat. Yes. yes. But and therefore what? Death has a gate, right? Yes. So I'm just gonna I, now don't pay much attention to really the order right now. Okay. But I'm just going to kind of just because right now this is because it's not all the seats. You know, so. We're just talking about just a few of them, but I'm just going to put that here, okay? So, so that has a seat at, at, in the court of God, okay? Because we see that the angel of death, death was released to the, just to the, it had orders from the throne. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It had orders from the throne of God to come and to kill the firstborn of everything, cattle, man, everything, right? right? Mm -hmm. He had an assignment to do. However, it said it could not touch. It could not touch the way it saw the doorpost. That tells me death could see and hear and obey. Yeah. Right. Okay? Right. So death couldn't, when it walked up to the doorpost that had the blood on it, it had to move past. Right? right? Okay, so death has authority, and it has a gate, and it's the gate to where? Yes. Come on, we just learned about this. We tied it all together. Yeah, gate to kill. Did I spell it wrong? I did. I said show all. Okay, so it's the, or you can call it hate, the underworld, or, you know, whichever from whichever terminology I want to pull it from. But we pulled it from the Hebrew, right? Because that's what's in the Bible. Okay. So, um, so the, the, the death has a gate to where? She Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So now let's go back to uh, Psalm 118. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And it says what? The gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter. Okay. So the gate of the Lord into which the what? Righteous. So there's a stipulation upon the gate. So the person, the seat, control or give authority to the individual or to the uh, the person or thing that sits there. But anyone can move in and out of the gate. Now, when you do it legally or legally is up to the law, right? Yeah. However. He said the righteous. So in order to enter into the gate of heaven, into the gate of God, you have to be 
be what? Righteous. So there is a stipulation, and I'm just going to say heaven. There's a stipulation on this gate. There are qualifications. There are what? We know that in order to get into the gate of Sheol, you must what have to be dead. You must have to pass from what? One life into the other. That gate requires there to be a natural death. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. You cannot go there. You cannot go to any of these, through any of these gates, with your flesh. You know, come out your body, mm -hmm. your physical body. You have to what? Your spirit is the only thing that can go through these gates. Right. They're not natural doors, like that door behind you right there. Mm -hmm. Where I can walk through why? Because it's natural. Mm -hmm. But these things are what? Spiritual. So when we talk about Hallelujah. When we're talking about gates, we're talking about the access point, the entry and the exit, but it's also the uh, availability to something or to someone. If I want to get to God, I got to go through his gate. The Bible says, enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving and his torch with praise. Meaning, in order for me to enter his gates, when I can get there, there's something that I must do. There's things that I must do. I've got to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And in order for me to get into his courts, i got to go through his gate. Right. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. In order for me to get into the place where, in order for me to get before the throne, i got to first go through the gate. The gates are important in the earth plan. Why? Because you want to know why prayers are not getting through. is because you're not getting through the gate. And how do we get through the gate? He said, enter his gate with what? Thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Uh, I should be thanking God. I should be what? Giving God glory. Giving God the honor. And then when I get into the court of God, I'm so happy. I'm praising him. Why? Because I'm sitting before the throne. And he said that I may obtain mercy in the time of need. He said, come boldly before the throne. It's an urgency to come before the throne. But before I get before the throne, that's why praise and worship is important. Because praise and worship gets you to the gate. It gets you to where it gets you through it, into the course of God, into the holies of holies. And we see that here in Ezekiel 48. In Ezekiel 48, there were gates that were in place with the tribe's name on them. All right? The gate has the name on the gate. The name on the gate tells me where it sends me. All right? Mm -hmm. All right, read the next scripture. Um, Matthew 7, 13 says, Enter ye into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there and many there be which go in, go in through. through. They're at. They're at, sorry. <laughs> so it says, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Meaning the gate of God. In order to get through what? In order to get to the gate, we got to go through the door. Which is who? Jesus. Okay? So in order to get to the gate, we got to go through the door, which is Jesus. But in order to get through the gate, we got to be a certain way. Righteous, right? Right. We have to, we have to, and that's, we become righteous, not out of our own works. See, when I, it's like when you're going on the airport, and before you get to the airplane, or before you get through to actually get to where you board the airplane, you have to go through, um, terminal. Uh, the terminal. What's the thing called? Security. Security. What? TCA? TSA. TSA. You got to go through TSA. And they got to, what, search your belongings? They got to, what, they got to send you through a scanner? You go down to this little door opening, right? Mm -hmm. And they go, you got to walk through it, or sometimes it's stand like this. And then you have to, well, then they got to be in, 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 check you, violate you, and all your types of areas. And, you know, I, I hate, that's the worst part of flying. 
kind of old way. You can't just walk up before God any kind of old way. It's like the king. You had to be granted access to see the king. Mm -hmm. You had to get what? You had to get in a place where what? The king found favor with you or he wanted to hear you. And, you know, there was a, in order to grant access to the king, hallelujah, you had to what? You had to go through some things. You had to go through some processes. You just couldn't, any common person just from the street, they didn't care if your mama just died and got robbed by somebody. You got to go through protocol. You got to go through the steps to get there, right? It, it didn't matter what was your situation. Right. So the same way it is in the the Spirit, you just can't just fall the gap on up in there and be like, whoa, yeah, mm -hmm, I'm up in here, God, what's up? Jesus is the what? The door that gets us to the Father. We got to go through the security measures, right? Yeah. We got to get our hearts right. We got to make sure that what? We're covered in the blood. Because the people that are what? Covered under the blood are those that have been made righteous through grace, through salvation of what? The Son of the, the, son of the living God, mm -hmm. right? And so then they are brought in before God and have access now. See, it's through Jesus Christ that we have access to the throne that we have obtained mercy. Not by our own will, not by our own what I think in our works. Your works can't do anything for you. The works of salvation or the works of good deeds are, are just, you know, this emptiness, this void. Why? Because it does nothing. Your righteousness, your righteousness is as filthy rags. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that what we are going through the door. We before you get to the gate, you go through the door. You gotta go through Christ. Yeah. You've got to have access. Through Jesus Christ. You cannot, it's illegal for you to go before God without being covered under the blood. Okay. It's illegal because that is the law of what? That's the law of heaven. You have to be blood washed. Mm -hmm. They had to be blood washed in the Old Testament with the blood of lambs and goats and bullocks and things of that nature for sin offering. The priest had to offer up a sin offering. He had to get what holy and sanctified and consecrated before God. There's things and protocols that the priest had to do before they entered. Excuse me, the holy of the holy. We still do the same thing. We got to repent. We got to get washed. We got to get cleansed. We gotta, and we wonder why our prayers are hindered. Because if we hold on forgiveness, that's something that the, that the enemy says, no, they can't make it through the gate. That's what contraband on you. Jesus goes, you got to get down forgiveness out of you. You gotta get that hurt out of you. You gotta get that. You gotta get that stuff out of you because I can't let you in. And because you got this stuff in you, this is not allowed in you. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right, read the next scripture. Um, Job 38 and 17. Uh huh. It says, "Had the gates of death been open unto thee, for thou hast seen the doors of the shadow of death." Okay, so he said, "Why is the gate in uh, Matthew that leaded to destruction?" So destruction, death. And we see this gate of death again, right? So death doesn't care whether you are in God or working for the devil. Death has an assignment. Right. Death has a scroll. Death has a, 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 a thing that it has to carry out no matter whether you in God or not. We, none of us can escape death. We all are going to have to be pulled up out of here whether we die a normal life, you know, die, or we get taken up out of here with the rapture. Mm -hmm. But your body ain't gone. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're going to technically, what, experience, what, a physical death. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But there's two deaths. You're either going to be going to physical, the first death, what Revelation talks about, you have the second death, which is eternal damnation into hell. Right. And we're going to talk about, hallelujah, the gate of hell. Mm -hmm. All right? So what we understand now is that we think we grew up, how many of y'all ever grew up thinking the devil runs hell? You, uh -huh. That's not true. The devil ain't running hell. He, that he ain't, but that's what TV makes it seem like, right? Mm -hmm. The devil runs hell. No, the devil won't be in hell just like the rest of some folks that ain't got saved. Right? right. He, the devil don't run hell. You know, he ain't even, he ain't even in there right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's here on the earth. Now, the place that he do run that they don't want to talk about, Ooh, praise the Lord, because he's the prince of the power of the air, right? right? And Jesus says that he had to come so that he could take back the authority of the earth, right. because we gave him that power, right. all right? Because we also have a seat right. and apostles, right? Yes. And apostles are, you can say, representatives, 
as well. Or ambassador. I'm going to say ambassador. That's what the Bible calls it. You know how we have here uh, House of Representatives and, you know, mm -hmm. even in, like, the Dukes, what, like, kind of like representatives in that time over a piece of land, mm -hmm. over a, 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 a deed of land. So, Because the apostle has a seat, right? right. Not now, the whole earth can't sit up here and have what? Seat, right? Mm -hmm. But we have dominion and authority, right? Because he's made a God for what? Of this earth. So we are what? In control of the earth realm. What we decide, right, is what happens here in the earth. Whether it's in the will of God or outside the will of God. Right? Whether we fall in sin or what? We fall after God's heart and we do what God has what commanded us to do. So we, as the people of God, ambassador, so the apostles are ambassadors of Christ to do and to implement the will of God, to give instructions, right? Those, we, they, are the, they are the seats or the throne above. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because there has, to be a, there has to be a way of order in the earth. We all can't be chiefs and not little Indians. Right. There has to be a balance. Because if we all walk around, like I said, with heads, we, got, we ain't got nowhere to walk. We, we can't move. We can't move out. You see what I'm saying? So the seats here represents, they, the seats represents the authority over the gate. But the gate gives access to what? The land, the territories, the cities, uh, and all that is great things, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we read... Um, Job, right? Yes. What, what's that for Job? Second Samuel 8 and 24. Go ahead, read it. And David sat between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof of the gate unto the wall, and lifted up his eyes, and looked, and behold, a man running along. So he said, What? He said, And David sat between two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof. So David is in between two places, right? Physically, right? So what's happening? So when God talks about to Ezekiel, in Ezekiel, hallelujah, if we can run there real quick. When God talks to Ezekiel about the watchtower, right here in the watchman, we'll go down to verse, uh, we'll start at verse 1. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat thou, eat that thou findest, and eat this roll, and go speak into the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then I did eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee into the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. Let's drop down to verse. Let's go down to verse uh, We'll drop down to verse 8. Y'all ready? And it says, Behold, I have my face strong against their faces, and their foreheads strong against my, their foreheads, as an adamant harder than flint, that I have made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. More when he said, Son of me, son of man, all my words that I speak unto thee, receive in thy heart, hear them with thy ears, and go get thee uh, them of the captivity unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them what? Thus said Lord, what thou wilt hear, or what they will forbear. You hear what I'm saying? So God was telling Ezekiel and charging him as a watchman. Ezekiel was not a natural watchman who sat on the watchtower of a physical what? A palace or in between a gate. Mm -hmm. But God was charging him in the realm of the spirit. And this is where the prophets come in. And this is why I have this thing down here.
there's the prophets and there's the watchtower, right? And uh, so, so actually, yeah. So, is it a scroll? Yeah, scroll. What scroll? Roll a scroll. Is it one? I'm trying to make sure I have it in the water. Yes. Okay. So, yes, I did. Okay. So the prophets, this is where the prophets come in, right? Right. Okay. But, and because, all right. So, now, I know we've taught on the prophets before. Do we need to go in there with them? Like the office of the prophet? Yes, sir. Yes. You, okay. They bring correction, they bring judgment, they bring what? Awareness, they bring warning. warning. Um, they, they are God's eyes and ears and mouth. Right? They keep the prophets here. Now we know the prophets, what? You have in between now. Now under the mantle or the office of the prophet, in that office you have seers, which are the eyes, or what you would call the watchmen. They what? They get revelation through sight, so visions, dreams, open visions, um, you know, those types of things. When you hear somebody say, the Lord is showing me, yeah. you know, sometimes I'll be like, you know, I see this, or God is showing me that. It's because I'm looking through the realm of sight. Um, you have dreamers, which are kind of like low level in that sight realm. Um, and then you have people, hallelujah, who are kind of like the, you have what we call them, uh, burden bearers. God will place on them the burden of the people. God will place on them, you know, the heart of him and the heart of the people. And then they will go into supplication or lamentation. Um, all these kind of different things under the office of the prophet, right? And so the prophet basically, it carry, they carry the heart of God. And they also have to well, understand, you know, they have to understand how does God speak? How does God communicate? So they're really dealing with the communication. And when you talk about the gates of the body, the mouth gate, the ear gate, hallelujah, they deal with, and the eye gate, they deal with these gates because these gates are forms of communication. Whether when you hear, it's if you've got to hear it in order to be able to communicate with somebody. Right? right? And you know, nowadays when someone is hearing impaired, they have to learn what sign language. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They have to learn sign language and things like that. They still, so these gates have to be in operation for there to be a full capability to be able to what, communicate effectively with God. So the prophet, hallelujah, there, and they don't, not say the prophet don't have a seat, but their seat is in the watchtower. Right. That makes sense. So each gate has, I'm going to erase that. All right? So so each gate has a watchtower to guard it, to check it. You understand? So each gate has a watchtower. David sat in between the watchtower. Ezekiel had to look from his spiritual watchtower and watch over the gate of his city. You see what I'm saying? He had to watch over Israel. He had to watch over the people. And this is what the scroll or the roll comes in. What is important, the prophet has to eat the scroll. You have to eat the roll. Because if you do not, how do you know what to give the people? How do you know how to warn the people? So the role is the authority or, no, I'm sorry, the role is the information that the prophet or the seer receives from God. The watchtower is the prophet's authority. 
to decree and to declare a thing in the, in the earth. And like I said, the watchtower is like the, the watchtower is like the uh, the police officer, the law enforcer. You see, the watchtower has the, the, the prophet has the right to to enforce. If someone is out of line, the prophet has the right to come in and to bring that person or that thing into alignment. And that's a lot of times. Now I've seen this with Baptist churches. We'll call on prophetic people. A prophet, now I've seen this before. Well, a, a church who doesn't really flow in the prophetic will call on a prophet to actually come into their house and set their house in order. Uh, they will actually, I've seen this uh, talk, they, they will bring a prophet into their house. De definitely they don't know what's really going on. They will bring a prophet into their house to set their church in order. And the prophet will come in and go, this is what I need to happen. This is what God is saying. This is what you need to get. This, these type of people that's in the church that, you know, this woman, that woman, this man, this is what's going on. This, yeah. and, the, and they will sit there and they will have a revival and they will really just get the church back in order. And, they will, and you have those types of prophets who will just go around from church to church and just put, of course, they have their own head, but they have the right to go to this body because we're all one body. You know, outside of the denomination, we're all one body. We're right. all one group of people of believers, right? Yes. And if your church is in chaos, yeah. you need to call on the watchman, right. the person whose sole authority is to watch and to speak and to declare what does say the Lord. Ezekiel had to set his face. The qualifications in order to be in the watchtower, you cannot be emotional. You cannot be overcome by your feelings. You cannot be judging people out how you feel. I don't care if you're irritated by what people done to you. You got to set your face like a flint. What did God tell Ezekiel? You got to put your forehead against their forehead. You got to set your face against their face. You can't be moved by what people do and say, whether they hear you or they forbear. You got to sit there and declare what I've said, what I've fed you. He said, you got to eat the roll. You got to eat all of it. Because the roll is what's the information, the revelation that I'm going to give to my people to keep them from going to a place of destruction. You see what I'm saying? Right. All right. Because now the prophets, now the prophets come in and out of the court. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Their job is to come in and get what from God and leave. To hear what's going on. You see here in, uh, in, in, in and I'm not going to go there because we, uh, I'm pretty sure most of y'all are familiar with the scripture, what I talk about in 1 Kings, where Malachi, I'm sorry, Micah, was called upon by Jehoshaphat and Ahab. And they were called upon, and Malachi and, and Micah was told to what, tell the king what they need to do before they go to battle. Was Ahab going to win? At Raymond Billy. Was he going to go up there and besiege the city? Mm -hmm. And God had put a, a loud line of spirit. But a, 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 uh, Micah. Micah, thank you. Micah, God had allowed him to enter into the courts to see what was going on. He said, I saw the Lord God of Israel sitting on a throne. And he had the courts. He had, he had, he was, it was like a court says he was talking about what was going on, what he wanted to happen to Ahab. He said, how God said, now this is God. He said, how can we persuade Ahab to go up into Raymond Gilead and fall? Meaning, how can we persuade Ahab to go up and die at Raymond Gilead? Because it was God's will for Ahab to die. Ahab was a wicked king. Now he had sent his watchman, his, uh, Elijah, and the prophesied Jezebel, his wife. Remember, we had that Mark Carmel where the prophets of Baal and, and God was at war, right? So he had sent Elijah to prophesy at, to Jezebel and say what? You're going to fall and you're going to die. You're going to be eaten up by dogs. That word came to pass, right? Now her, now her husband was still there. But he needed Ahab to die. Now the only reason why Ahab prolonged his life is because he repented when Elijah came to him. But then he turned his heart back again from God. And God said, uh-uh. This is cut loose, grace, mercy. Mm -mm, you got to die. So what? He had to, so in order for death to be released to him, I want you to understand that this is what happened in the realm of the spirit. Because we read this and we're wondering how and what's going on in the realm of heaven, in the realm of the spirit, and how is this taking place on earth. 
So if you look at that scripture in the realm of the context of the spirit right here, you will see you got in the court, you got death. And then you have now in the court of God, now you have demonic spirits and you have angels and you have godly spirits. We're going to get there in a little bit. Hallelujah. But you see you have death here. Death can't be released until someone is what? To, 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 what, what? And until someone is on when God says, I need you to go, this person is being called for. Yeah. You see? So Ahab repented. So, death, so God told death to what? Behave, right? And that's what it's <laughs> to go, you know, I know you get antsy there, but hold on. Because it's just like uh, when Isaiah went to Hezekiah the king. And Hezekiah, and he said, well, you shall surely die. Get your house in order, for you are going to die. And, 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 and Isaiah told him this and was going in, and he had got to the court of the king. Isaiah, I mean, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and began to pray. God heard him. And said, okay, Isaiah, go back and tell him that I'm going to add 15 years to his life. Now, did God work off the ground? No. Why? Because Hezekiah still died. It's just he had to prolong death and come. He said, I'm going to give you 15 years to enjoy the rest of your life, but you're going to die after that. And he surely died. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what spirit is that you have... Uh, you had what dead sitting. You had a lion spirit sitting in the seat because they were all conversing. The Bible says that you had one on the right hand saying this and one on the left hand saying this, and then came forth a lion spirit and said, "I will go and I will be a lion spirit in the mouth of all your prophets." And God said, "Go." You see what I'm saying? So a lot of this time is happening in the realm of the spirit. Why are things happening in the earth realm? Because we got to look at now, we got to look at what's going on in the realm of the spirit. When you understand how things are flowing in the realm of the spirit and how things are flowing with God, you will understand why things are happening on the earth realm the way they are happening today. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. so, this, so they were in the court and they was talking and they was communicating with one another. And God allowed Micah, the prophet, to be there in the midst. Why? So that he could go and warn and that he could be the voice of God in the earth. So the prophet also has access to the court, but they do not have a seat necessarily. They have a watchtower. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. They're there to go and come. Because right. we can't stay up there and everything because we wouldn't get nothing done down here. You see what I'm saying? All right. So the watchman, the watchman has a, a post. So this is the watchtower. Now I'm going to go behind you. Yeah, I bet it'll make it. So the watchman, the watchman is a watchtower over the gate. So it's their job to what? Guard the gate and to keep charge over the gate. And so what also comes in with this, I believe this is too, is prayer warriors. When we talk about a prayer warrior, someone who wars in the realm of the spirit. They are watchmen as well. They must watch and guard the gate because you cannot, because what is happening is the enemy does not care about what really is going on in these little territories. He wants control over the gate. If he can control the gate, he can control what goes on in it. He ain't trying to come after your car. You get what I'm talking about? Right. He ain't trying to come after your house. He can care less about this material stuff. Mm -hmm. He's taught, he's the reason, the reason why your house and your car, hallelujah, is being tainted with is because what? Things in the realm of the spirit are being messed with. And but we be trying to, the devil can't get my car. The devil, no, you need to get in the realm of the spirit and see what's going on at the gate. You see what I'm saying? Right. Hallelujah. So, and, and a lot of times, let me tell you something, a lot of times Satan. Ain't going to say ain't got, he ain't dealing, we can talk about the devil, but we got to know, we got to call that spirit out for what it is. Because every spirit ain't the devil. Right. The devil don't be working, he, he don't be working down there. Mm -hmm. He up in the act, he up in the second heaven, that's where his domain is. You see what I'm saying? He ain't the power prince of the dust. You know, he ain't down here on, he, he the power prince of the air because he is in, he is up above in the second heaven. That's what his domain is. So a lot of times we call the devil, the devil, the devil ain't hey, that. That's that little fear over here. You just dealing with fear, but we try to pass it up. He's the devil. No. Lucifer, like, I'm up here in the second. I ain't, I ain't got nothing to do down here with what's going on. These little spirits be messing with y'all, little cars and whatnot. Y'all, y'all understand. Alright, let's go to the next scripture. What's the next scripture? Yeah, is it Revelation? Or yeah, yeah. Is it, is it Revelation? It is Revelation. Okay, go to Revelation.
Y'all ready? Y'all excited? We are already at the one hour mark. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Revelation 21. All right. Now, this is going to remind you of a scripture we just read. Mm -hmm. And I want to know if you can get it. All right. I'm going to start uh, at verse. Uh, I'm going to start at verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels who had the seven vows and full of the seven last plagues, talking with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain, and showed me that a city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as a crystal. And I, and, I, and I had a wall great and high, and twelve gates, and twelve, and the gates twelve angels, names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of children of Israel. On the east three gates, and on the north three gates, and on the south three gates, and on the west three gates, and the wall of the city had twelve fountains, foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the land. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof, and the city like four square, and the gates, and the length is a large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof in a hundred and forty four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall, it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stone. And the first foundation was jasper, the second, sapphire, the third, uh, chalice, doni, the fourth, an emerald, the fifth, seragoxy, the sixth, sardis, the seventh, cherubim. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We just thank you, Jesus. And verse 21. Oh, <laughs> and the twelve gates were twelve pearls, and every several, several gates was one of the pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, and it was a transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of sun, neither of the moon, to shine it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. You understand? So what does scripture just remind you of? Ezekiel. Ezekiel. And if you're not careful, you will miss the measurements. Now the measurements are a little different here because we're in the Greek and they kind of transform. But if you kind of put them all back in the same thing, they're the similar measurements. But what we have to see here, it says the 12 gates were the what? 12 tribes. 12 tribes. Right? And it says, what was the foundation? And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. In them the names of the what? 12 apostles of the Lamb. All right? But what was with every gate? 12 angels. But So that tells me that not only is there, what, apostles, but what with those is what? Angels at the gate. Why? Because that's spiritual representation. That angel represents what? Because we're on the earth, so we can't be in heaven and earth at the same time. Right? Because we got to be able to walk in and out. So the angels are representatives for us in heaven. You see what I'm saying? The twelve, so the angels, hallelujah. is the help of God and the 
what the, the, the backing of heaven for us, right? Because we can't war in the realm of the spirit by ourselves. That's why we have agents of help, right? That's why he said, I give my angels what? Charge over thee to keep me. You see what I'm saying? Because God, hallelujah, is a gracious and merciful God. So he says, listen, I know you're going to need help. Right? Yes. So not only do we have guardian angels, like we like to call them, but we have angels, hallelujah, or agents of help in the realm of spiritual help for us in the realm of the spirit that's at every day. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So, not only, so now we not only have four eyes, but we got angels that are full of eyes. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we have angels, we have a seat, we have a gate, and we have a what? A tower. Okay. Let's go on. What's the next scripture? Oh, that one. That was the end of it? Yes. Okay. Let's go on to the second. So do we understand what's happening here? All right, now we're going to talk about the seat. Y'all ready? Yes. Okay. Let me get to my seat notes. Actually, I forgot to read, uh, but I already said it, Psalms 104. It says, When well, enter his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, and be thankful unto him, and what? Bless his name, right? Mm -hmm. So you can write down Psalms 104, and we was talking about what? The stipulations of entering into God's gates, the heaven gates, okay? All right. Uh, let's. Well, actually, before we go into gates, I mean, we're gonna um, last thing on gates. Let's go to Psalms twenty-four and seven. All right. And I'm gonna read it, and it says, "Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, the everlasting doors, and the King of Glory shall come in." So we see doors again, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. So if we know. The doors, hallelujah, the doors in the rest. So when we talk about doors, what are doors? It's a, it's a entry point. Entry, yeah. It's a way to, to go in. It's a passageway going in and out. Like a, so what would make a difference between the door and the gate? It's kind of obstruction. The door doesn't have a physical obstruction. The gate just has bars. Okay. There's not a, it's unlike a gate where it's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of like if you have a house, mm -hmm. some gates, you, you got to have the key code. You mm -hmm. have to have the, the little button or the key code. There's a certain like authority for you to get through that gate. But for a door, anyone can open up a door and pass through. It's a free kind of like a, just a, literally a transport, like a, a way to get in or out or something like it's just okay. a so yeah so i mean so yeah a door would and the reason why we, the door's not here because doors really are for like i like your your you both your you both your illustrations are kind of similar when you're talking about the house or you're talking about a building and you stated and you said that a gate is like the entrance to the city but doors are the infrastructures inside of that city and that is kind of what a door is in the realm of the spirit. When someone talks about, you know, going through a door or you're opening up doors, uh, unaware, you know, whether it's demonic or spiritual, you know, or godly, you know, we're talking about the entrances and the exits and the passageways and the travel ways inside of a gate. You 
get what I'm saying? So if so depending on what doors I'm opening, it's gonna depend on what gate I am traveling through. You see what I'm saying? If I'm in the gate of heaven, am I gonna open up demonic doors? Yes. Because if the righteous are those that enter through the gate, mm -hmm. there's a stipulation, right? There's, there has to, so doors isn't really because there's already some code that see, and that's the thing about the airport, like I said, you've already, the door is what makes you sure as well, that you got everything off, right? Mm -hmm. You enter through the gate, right? But the thing about it is, when you get inside, there's even doors inside of there. But what is really more important is Jesus is the door to God's gate. Right. So you have doors outside the gate and within the gate. Yeah. Because if the door is before the gate, it's the door basically saying, I got to, so the doorway between heaven and earth, right, in order for you to get up to where the gate of heaven is, mm -hmm. I got to what? Go through Jesus. I got to get the blood washed, right? But then when I get inside the gate, I have what? Well, there's places in heaven where you can travel and go. Wherever the Spirit of the Lord takes you, right? Right. So he said what? Well, lift up your heads, all oh, ye gates. Oh, gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors. Gates are plural. Doors are what? Plural. Meaning they're multiple. But what is he saying? He said, lift up your heads, all oh, ye gates. Meaning, pick up your, these authorities. Got to lift up their heads to who? Why? God said that the king of glory, if you keep reading, go down and drop down to verse 20, uh, I mean, verse seven, uh, 8. What does it say? Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Uh, what is, I can hear you. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Verse 9. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. And the king of glory shall come in when you lift him up. So that tells me how do we get the gate of heaven to what? Come and allow God to come through the gate of heaven into the gates of the earth. And through the doors of the earth so that what God can move in the earth realm. We got to lift up our, the gates got to lift themselves up. Meaning the authority got to bow down and worship. Mm -hmm. the, these gates got to bow and recognize who? And he said, who is? Meaning, as a, who is this king of glory? And the answer was what? The Lord God strong in mind. So that means there has to be a, a, a recognition of who is this king of glory? Who is the king of all kings? Who is this Lord of all lords? And when you lift up your hands, when you lift up yourself, and you say, God is, Jesus is the king. That he is the one who is the ruler of heaven and earth. And then that what makes way for the king of glory to you understand? Yes. So in a lot of times we gotta understand this, we gotta come outside of the realm of ourselves and we gotta put the focus on who? God. God. Because at the end of the day, who is it gonna save your life? God. Who gonna save your soul? Alright. Y'all ready? Yes. Let's go to seat. Okay. Because we talk about the seat. So let's go down to, so we'll go to Luke 1 and 52. Okay. And so we'll go to Revelations 4 and 4. Okay. Okay. Um, and, so, and you can also read Revelations 11 and 16. All right, somebody read Revelation 16 and 10. Can we just do that first? Sure. And that was going to be, I'm going to make sure, because, yeah, so that one's it for C. Okay. All right. We got it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, the first one, go ahead. Luke 1, 52, he has put down the mighty from his seat and the compass and the 
He said, you, he said, he had put down the mighty from their seat and exalted them of low degree. Meaning, you can be demoted. Your seat does not mean that because you sit here in the court does not mean that what? You cannot be demoted. Look at Satan. And the scripture says what? The mighty. Them that think they are prideful. Pride is one way. It's actually the way to get yourself demoted. Because he said what? And he will take and he will exalt them of what? Low degree. If you look at that in the way of a monarchy, someone of low degree is like a peasant. Slaves or peasants were them that are of low degree. And he said he would take, so he's, what he's saying is if you look at Satan and look at Lucifer when he was in heaven, he was at high degree. He was one of them that sat next to the throne. Because the closer you are to the throne, the closer, the higher your authority is, the higher your rank is. Mm -hmm. All right? He was a cherub, meaning he was close up to God. But his heart got prideful. Mm -hmm. He thought within himself what to be better and to be like God. He wanted to be on the throne. He wanted the seat. He wanted the throne that God had. He wanted to rule like God. And because he got conceited within himself, in his beauty, in his, in his talent, in his skill, he wanted to be like God. And so what did God do? God threw him down. He threw, he threw himself down so low, even below the below man. To where his, all his powers were stripped from him. All he had was his skill, his craftiness his intellect, and his knowledge of what was to come. That's what the Bible says. He knows what he has for a short time. He don't know everything now, but that he does know, he uses it to what? His advantage. And so what did he do? He tricked what? Adam and Eve. He tricked Eve mm -hmm. into what? Giving up her authority, her seat on him. Yeah. You have to see what was happening in the realm of the spirit. God gave them a seat yeah. because he made them gods on the earth. Right. He gave them dominion and authority to what? And they were seated in heaven. We, that's why he said we are seated in what? Heavenly places through Jesus Christ now. You can't seat yourself. You have to be seated by the king. So Adam and Eve were seated as what? Ambassadors for the earth realm in heavenly places. But Satan, but Lucifer, one understood that I can remove them from their seat and take it. They got no power. They can't do nothing with them. He just wanted to place back in the seat. All right, let's keep going. We're going to look at that in a little bit. All right, read the next one. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. All right, read, keep going, read the other ones, because they're all similar. Yep. Um, 1116. Mm -hmm. It says, And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped God. Okay, go to the next one. And 16 and 16 10. 10. It says, and the fifth angel poured out his veil, his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed, gnawed their tongues for, for pain. pain. The seat of the beast, the Antichrist, <laughs> the dragon, Satan. This is what's got to happen. God has to what? Rid and what? Dispose of all. But because Satan has what well, authority over the earth, see that's we're gonna read, we're gonna read, and you're gonna see what Jesus said. Not what I said, but what Jesus said. He Satan has a place here. That's why he's called the accuser of the brethren. 
because he has a place here to see. Why? Because he's the power prince of the air. We gave him authority when we sinned. Mm -hmm. And we became, and like Jesus said, you become like your father or what? The devil. Yeah. A father is a head figure, mm -hmm. a ruler of the household, a, 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 a person of authority, right? Mm -hmm. So when you, so what happened is we sinned and we came under Satan. We got under Lucifer. And that's why we had disconnected from God. Because we had been translated from light into darkness. And we began to see the closer and closer we got, and the more uh, and the more further away we got from God, the more destruction and death began to happen. Because death, again, doesn't matter whether you are with God or with, uh, with God. He has a role. He has a, uh, he has a, 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 an authority to come after that which is on his list. And when you sin, and when you, because the wages of sin is what? Yeah. Death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying here? Mm -hmm. Death, you're going to be swallowed up. And when he comes again, and he comes, and, 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 and God goes, all right, you're going to take them to the pit of hell, the destruction. Mm -hmm. Second death. You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right, read the next one. That was it? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, here we go. To, so we talked about the sea, right? Mm -hmm. So the sea, hallelujah, the sea is a place of authority. The 24 elders had crowns on. They had a certain what, authority. They, they, they are set, um, what, around the throne. Kind of like what you see right here. But they, what, they had to bow down. The seats have to bow down to the throne. The seats have to bow down to the throne. Now we know that there are, hallelujah, there are thrones that are what? We demonic thrones. We're going to read that in a little bit. But we're talking about this God's throne is bigger. God's throne, hallelujah, it rules over all. It's supreme. Mm -hmm. And we're going to read that. Go to um, 2 Kings 25 and 28. 2 Kings 25 and 28. And then someone gets Revelation 7 and 15. Who got, who got the first one? I am. Okay. Uh, Psalms 103 and 19. Okay. And Daniel 7 and 9. Uh, someone get Matthew 13, I mean 19 and 28. Twenty-eight. And then we're gonna ask them to be that section of front. Okay. I told you that's a lot. We had the eight twenty, we had the one hour and thirty minute mark. So, you said Daniel 79? Yes. Okay. Who got that one? I got it. Okay. Who ready for the read the first one? I got it. All right. And what does it say? It says, And he spake kindly to him and set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with him in Babylon. Okay. So he, he spake kindly to him and set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with in Babylon. So what's happening here is, what we see is a natural representation of what one kingdom overtaking another kingdom. Mm -hmm. Because the throne is the head of that kingdom. Remember that now. Mm -hmm. The throne is the head of the kingdom. Now, this court represents the kingdom. Every seat is a representation of the territory or the land or uh, the gates in that city or in that in that kingdom. You understand? So the throne represents the head of the kingdom. Uh -huh. Every seat represents the land or the territory or the gate of that kingdom. In the, within that kingdom. Representation, right? Like I said, ambassador. Okay? We got it. Okay, cool. Alright, so what happens is uh, we're going to read 
read in Revelation? Who does Revelation? Lord, and the person who has Psalms 103. Mm -hmm. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Okay. So he said in verse Revelation 7 15, Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. He that sit on the throne shall dwell among them. And the Lord, and Revelation Psalms 103 and 19, the Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom ruling over all. Do we understand? God's kingdom is the supreme kingdom. His kingdom is the kingdom that ruleth even over the kingdom of darkness. We know, like I said, when we go back to the beginning, there are two kingdoms, and these two kingdoms operate under the same principle. Why? Because the principle comes from this kingdom, the kingdom of life. Now I'll put this in the middle. kingdom of life is what created the earth. Why? Because in the beginning, before even the sun and the moon was created, he said, let there be what? Life. The kingdom of life created the earth. The kingdom of life consumes and overtakes the kingdom of God. It is the kingdom that is supreme above all things. And but, listen to this, Every kingdom has what laws. Mm -hmm. Every kingdom has what a uh, uh, thing that it has to be based on a uh, governance, right? So when just like we have in the church, when you have sets of people, the uh, the the, uh, the schisms, mm -hmm. and you have a, a rebellion, mm -hmm. what Satan but rebelled against God right. and caused there to be a separation. So then out of that was formed what? The kingdom of darkness. Because if you ain't light, yes. you're darkness. You can't be in between. Come on. There ain't no kingdom of gray. Or dead. You know. <laughs> I was thinking that. <laughs> you see, there ain't no kingdom of gray. There ain't no, there ain't no kingdom of, you know, half light, half darkness. No, 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 no. There's what? One or the other. That's why he said, you're either going to drink from the cup of blessing or you're going to drink from the cup of death. Hallelujah. So that tells you when you're talking about the cup, which kingdom you're in? Which court are you sitting in? Because if you're sitting in the court of heaven, in the court of God's kingdom, that means you are what? You are drinking from the cups of blessing. But if you are sitting in the courts of demons and spirits and in the kingdom of darkness, that is what rebellion is done. And that's why you say rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Because you are operating in a power that is of the devil mm -hmm. against God. You gotta understand rebellion is a war, it's a war that you are claiming war against the kingdom. If I rebel against the kingdom of God, that means I am waging war on that kingdom. Right. If I rebel against the kingdom of God, I am waging war on that kingdom. So therefore, it depends which cup I'm drinking from tells me which place I'm sitting in. Mm. All right? So the throne. So then he said, well, does the devil have a throne? Let's see what we talk about here. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Because he was cast down, and he took the throne of this earth, right, in the atmosphere, right? <clears throat> Okay. Did we read Daniel 79? No. Go ahead. It says, I beheld, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garments were white as snow, and his hair was a was a head like pure wool, and his throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels were as burning fire. Daniel, now this right here is a prophecy of the end time. Like when we sat, when we said in Revelation, where it said the beast was a, what, his seat was cast down, right? So the enemy is thrown in the earth realm. The devil has a throne in the earth realm. All right? He sits in what? He sits up here in the atmosphere. Prince of the power of the air, right? Mm -hmm. He ain't God. Mm -hmm. But
but he trying to act like he is. But he still got a vow. Why? Because he said the ancient of days cast all, he said, and the ancient of days did sin, but he cast all their forms down. There's going to come, if you read Revelation, it, it, uh, it talks about, in chapter 19 and 20, it talks about a war that's going to happen between Christ and the beast and the dragon and those that represent the Antichrist and Satan, Lucifer. That these two kingdoms are, and this is what happens now, we get a war preparation. And we have a little battle. Because, you know, they say, they say I won, they never won the battle, but they didn't win the war. Mm -hmm. You see, we have these little battles, and the devil may say, like, you know, when Jesus came, and he was seen some type of way, you know, he thought he had won when Jesus died. But then when Jesus came up from the grave with all power in his hand, he had restored the earth realm to them that believe. Right. See the stipulation. There was a little battle that was won. Yeah. He said, if you believe me, you have power over all the power of the enemy. If you get in a place where through Jesus Christ, you can't sit here because the house of God is a self can't stand. He, that's what he told the Pharisees, right? Mm -hmm. When they started talking about you casting out devils by a devil. He said, ain't a devil. Right. Because the house of God is a self can't stand. You can't talk about, well, I'm going to you know, in the, I'm going to be in the darkness, but, you know, I, the devil ain't my ruler. You know, no, no, it don't work that way. Right. You're going to either accept Christ well, and become translated into the marvelous light. You know what Peter said? Mm -hmm. Or what? You're going to stay in darkness. And so what we have to understand is that God has what? Supreme rulership. So why? But this is what the devil don't want you to know is. That if you get if you get in the kingdom of God, and it seems like you gotta give up things. Hey, you gotta give up things. Why? Because what you're giving up is baggage. Because what God's gonna do is like He does everything else. He's gonna bring you into a place where well, you begin to walk into the full knowledge. See what and that's what happen is see the devil. And this is why worship is important because who you worship is who controls you. It's what kingdom you're in. If you worship money, then mammon what? Is a was is because man that's what Jesus said when he talks about when he's talking about the uh, uh, the manager, the uh, the person who was work, who was working for the rich man, and then what? He was not being a good steward. He's talking about the steward, right? And so he called him mammon. You either gonna you can't serve two masters. That's where that scripture comes from, right? And so he said, either man is going to be your God, or you know what, you're going to follow after Christ. You're going to follow after him. You're going to worship the Lord thy God. Right. But man, hallelujah, falls under the kingdom of darkness. He falls under the throne. Man ain't nothing but a seat. Come on. Because if you're worshiping money, well, you ain't worshiping God. And then Paul says what? That when they actually said they may be a little bit worshiping idols, but they're actually worshiping demons. Right. Oh, come on. So you gotta see what's happening here. You ain't worshiping just what it may look like a table or a tree or the wind or the sun or the moon. These things are what? These things have what? Demons and angels attached to them. Right. And an angel ain't gonna let you worship because they would tell, they would say the, the, in the Bible, anytime you see, anytime they say, you know, or get grabbed through the grace, they say, uh huh. Yeah. Get up, don't worship me. You gotta worship Jesus, worship the Lord. I know I don't deserve it. You see, because that, you don't put a demon will let you. Ah, uh, come on. Come on. Is that, read the next scripture, is that it? Matthew 19, 28. Go ahead. I got it. And Jesus said unto them, Bear I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. He's talking to the disciples. The first twelve apostles have a what? A seat in the new reign. That's what we see in Revelation. Jesus prophesied himself what was going to happen. The twelve apostles, these ambassadors, why? Because they are earth ambassadors. They are earth ambassadors. They are ambassadors from the heaven realm to the earth. That's why Paul said, I'm an ambassador in bonds to Christ. As an apostle, you, they operate as an ambassador for our heaven on earth. And the 12 apostles, the first 12, had what? A seat for them prepared. Prepared now. 
to reign when Jesus will take the throne. You see what I'm saying? Because what he said, he said what? What he said in verse, he said what? And the Son of Man it shall sit the throne of his glory, and he shall also sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. All right. Let's go. John 16 and 11. Someone get that. Okay. Someone get Daniel 10 and 20. And Ephesians 2 and 2. Whoever get Ephesians 2 and 2, get Ephesians 6 and 12. Okay. And then someone get Ephesians 2 and 10. Colossians. You, you don't know what Colossians is? No, I thought you said Colossians. You, you, you said, you didn't say Colossians. <laughs> Get Colossians 2 and 10, and someone also dropped down to verse 15 on that one as well. And whoever had Ephesians, get Ephesians 3 and 10 as well. Well, yeah, you gotta go back to Colossians. Okay, Col uh, Colossians, 2 and, Colossians 2, and 2 and 10, 2 and 15. And 2 and 15. Right. Okay, and then whoever had Ephesians the other time, get Ephesians 3 and 10. And then someone get Titus 3 and 1. Who got that one? Okay. And then whoever, well, we'll get, well, we'll get, well, whoever got Ephesians, get Ephesians 1 and 21. What? Ephesians 1 and 21. And whoever had, whoever had Colossians, get Colossians 1 and 16. <laughs> I know, I'm just jumping all the way around. Well, okay, I got Colossians. Oh, okay, so I'm, I think, uh, uh, Jared, you had what? All Ephesians, all right? Ephesians. Yeah. And then you got all Colossians. That's, and somebody got Titus, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. go ahead. He said, of judgment. Go to verse uh, 12. I mean, verse 10. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and then you see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Okay, so what did Christ say? He said, I got to go back because what? I got to regain, I got to get the earth ground back to a place now so that the prince of this world can be judged. I gotta go back, so because what did he come down here for? He didn't really, he came in here to save souls, right? Mm -hmm. That was his earthly plan. But his spiritual plan was to get the earth ram back into its rightful place with God. Right. Through his blood. Because Satan had what? Become the prince of this world. He got a seat. And Christ and God was like, no, 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 no. We got to get the earth, we got to get the earth around back in this bright place, right? Go ahead. What did you say to Daniel? Because then he said, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone, for lo, the prince of uh, Gr Grecia mm -hmm. shall come. Grecia. That's basically, that's Greece. Yeah. Okay, that's the translation of Hebrew, and that is Greece. So, we see here. And what we I'm going to discuss it. Let's just go ahead and read all of all of that, and then we're going to bring it all in. All right, go ahead. Ephesians two. Ephesians one Oh, you read in the order that I gave you. Ephesians two and two. Ephesians two and two. This is New King James. Okay. In which you once walked according to the course of this world and according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who you now work in the sons of disobedience. Okay. Go ahead and verse, go to Ephesians 6 and 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Okay, and go to, uh, and go down and read, yeah, 3 and 10. Come out to Austin first. Go ahead. 2 verse 10 says, And ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. Got it. 
Kelly. Verse 15 says, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Mm -hmm. And then verse chapter 1, verse 16, mm -hmm. For by him were all things made that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things Okay, give me Titus. Titus 3 1. Yeah. Titus 3 1. Put them in mind, be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to end it in the world. Okay. That, is that it? Yes. Okay, so now we're going to do the demonic stuff with this one. Yes. Okay. Now, we know that. There is, just as there is, you know, a hierarchy in the realm of God, in the kingdom of light, there's also one in the kingdom of darkness, right? Mm -hmm. And we keep seeing these very two ones, principalities and powers, right? Yes. Now, a principality is not, and as we go into, when we go back to Daniel 10, we see that the prince of the Persian is actually a principality. Now, again, they, if you look at it in this model of uh, the, the, a monarchy, the prince, the principality would be the prince, right? Right? Yes. So the principality is the prince mm -hmm. over, so basically the principality would sit, and they will also, like the apostle, will sit a throne. But their throne will be against you. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So if you have a gate, that's just a, that's just a, you have a seat here, and you have a gate, you would have a seat here. See what I'm saying? Ah, so like a counter. Yeah. Okay. That's what I mean by against mm -hmm. the gate. And you would have an angel here, and you would have a demon here. We you know a demon ain't nothing but a fallen angel. Yeah, yeah. Okay? And you would have a town, a watch tower here. And a watch. And a watch tower here. Right? Yes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We understand. Mm -hmm. So a principality would have a seat in the court. Right? Yes. Now, we all know they work for God, right? If we go back to uh, Micah in the first king, you see a divine spirit, which is a demonic spirit. Mm -hmm. What was what was lead by the what? The operation of God Himself. Mm -hmm. So they all are under control by God. They can't do anything, even though they, they have their intentions right. God ain't stupid. Mm -hmm. God ain't naive. You know, we had some naive kings that, that you know they had the, the wicked ones just sit right in front of them and they didn't know it. Mm -hmm. God knows their intentions are wicked. But God says, Listen, I know your intentions are wicked, but I got a will that needs to be accomplished. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So, the principality. So, let's list out. Now, how, do y'all remember mm -hmm. the order? Mm -hmm. From highest to low. Yes. Y'all ready? Yes. All right, I'm going to list them out right here. Give to me. Throne. Dominion. Uh, spiritual wickedness in higher places. Rules of darkness. Hold on. Principalities, powers, mm -hmm. strongholds. Well, strong men and strongholds. All right. So we have thrown. Well, we just ready to off.
put the I'm trying to read without reading the definition. I mean the word. It's like a the like the power or like the rulership of something. You know, like you have dominion over the land. That means you control it. Controls what's in the land or controls what's going on. What's a dominion? president or so and then underneath that would be um, 
I don't know what comes up. Yeah, the, I mean, that would be like the, like, like the, yeah, the, yeah, like, no, like the, I would say Jewel of the Darkness would be like the generally stuff, because they like to give out the orders of like, what to do, where to go, what you need to do, what you need to distract, what you need to do, this, this, this. Okay, so, right. so when you think about a ruler of darkness, think about a someone who's over agents, mm -hmm. over a, a task, over is someone, because when you, when we look at the word ruler, we typically think of someone who is kind of sitting on the throne, right? Yeah. And not really someone who's kind of like a, a supervisor or, you know, a, a someone of that status. Mm -hmm. Because a supervisor is a ruler too. Mm -hmm. Their authority is limited, yeah. but they are a supervisor. It's like overseer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Remember I got to talk about we had the five-fold, mm -hmm. right? And then we have like an overseer, which makes like a ruler or a bishop. So you see how in the apostle realm, underneath that we have what the bishop or the overseer, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if you ain't a throne, be a spiritual ruler against the rule of darkness, rule of darkness is gonna be in what we call like overseer or the not walking in the fullness of a spiritual weakness and isolation. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like you have God, right? God is the head. He sits on the throne. Mm -hmm. We have Jesus Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Who's what? Who's coming up and who's who triumph and who's going to be seated on the throne of his glory, right? Mm -hmm. And then what? We have what? We have these seats around us, right? right. And we have these angels. We have the archangels. We can talk about that, yeah. right? So there's, there's other things. And then we have the cherubims. We have the seraphims. And we have what? The four beasts. And, uh, I'm sorry, the four beasts and the cherubims are the same thing. But we have these, we have the 24 elders, and we have what? The council of heaven. We have all these different roles in what? In the realm of heaven, right? So it's like the same thing. You have dominion. Dominion would be like your archangel, right? Okay. And then you have spiritual wickedness in high places. These would be like your cherubim. Because cherubim are seated where? Next to the throne in high places. Right? And then you have your rulers of darkness. These will be like, you know, uh, uh, um, what's this? What's an example? Like your 24 elders. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then you have what? Principalities. Mm -hmm. So now we're getting into the realm of what we're watching gates now. Mm -hmm. You see? We put, and this is the thing you got to be thinking about principality as in the realm of like a prince, but more in the realm of you are you have a stakeholder over a land. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You have control over so that title prince. We we take the the term of that prince as like the son of a king or something like that. But in this essence, it's like you have authority over a charge or a land or something of a sort like that. You see what I'm saying? You Google word principality, you will see that reference in there. So when you see principality, you gotta think now, okay, now we're getting to seats, particular seats, right? We're getting to two particular seats. Now, each one of these have a seat in the court, right? But when we're talking about seats that what? That control gates. All right? Okay, so principalities at the gate, and we see that in Daniel, right? Where we had the Prince of Persia and the Prince of Greece that had came. Now, this is what we gotta talk about. Is when Daniel was seeing this, and, and, and Gabriel had came and told him what was going on. Who did Gabriel call on to Michael. war against the principality? Michael. Michael. So now we gotta know how to call, how to, what, uh, call on help. Gabriel did not call on, what, he didn't call on God. He said, but Michael came down. God sent Michael. Right. He didn't call, you know, God didn't come, you know, God didn't send the chair from Jesus. No, he called on who? He called on my, an archangel. Right. Why? Because you're talking about gates. So when we're talking about gates, like a dominion, 
A dominion will come in when an infrastructure is being under attack. What? The, the language of the two kings is simply it mirrors that almost mirrors each other, but with the king in darkness, it's more military. Yes. Because it's fighting. Mm -hmm. There's a, a, um, opposition. Right. That's the word that, that, that comes to mind. It's structured for opposition. Mm hmm. It's very much so. Very very much so. Aristocracy. Mm -hmm. Very much structural proposition. Well, God is, you know, he has militants in his, but he's like, you know, it is what it is. He's just there. God is not really he doesn't, he doesn't, Because when you look at something, if you look at like a monarchy, in the sense that they have a, because you have a militant, when you have a militant, uh, a, a kind of a dictatorship, but it's more mili military than it is like, that's you know, really big difference between a monarch and a dictatorship. It's like theirs is a lot more, they have a lot more military power. And it is more militant than the monarchy is, you see? And because you have to be a little bit more forceful. You have to be a little bit more aggressive. Mm -hmm. And it's all about taking control and taking land. And so when we talk about when we talk about dominion, you know, a dominion is what's going to come in at the gate. When we talk about these two angels right here, talk about these two angels that sit, that's like a that has sitting up, that's sitting there. When it's time for what opposition against the gate, who's going to come? A uh, dominion's going to come. And, 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 and an archangel, warfare, which is Michael. Now he may send some, now some, another angel may come that's what, underneath him. But we gotta understand this, that these are high levels in the realm of the spirit. When we're talking about, when this one really get into warfare. When we're talking about war in the spirit realm and war against things that are coming against the earth realm, you gotta understand what's going on. Because a lot of times we be calling on Michael to come down here and war against fear, and we wonder why Michael ain't gay. Right. That ain't his, that ain't where he belongs. Right. There's very few times where you see Michael come down and war. And the time you see it is in Daniel. When there's a prince, when there is warfare at the gate. Because you see, the Prince of Persia, he was a principality that was seated at the gate. Of Persia. There was opposition at the gate spiritually. So what? Gabriel couldn't get through. The word couldn't get through to the prophet that was at the watchtower. Gabriel had a message. You got to see which angel is coming to the watchtower. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Gabriel was coming to uh, was coming to Daniel to release the word of the Lord. To give him the scroll. But because a principality stood up at the gate and said, no, nah, uh, 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 no. Gabriel was not, Gabriel was not a warring angel. That ain't what he's what he's trained in. So he tried to do what he could do, but what? He had to call on. See, that's what you have to say in order. He had to, God had to send Michael to what? That Michael may subdue the principality and allow the gate, because guess what's happening? If you're not careful in prayer, the things that you call on God for can't come through if you're not, what, pulling down those principalities that's warring at the gate. Sometimes we like to call them demonic gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to stand there and they're going to fight against the will of God from being done. They're going to what? They're going to try to delay as much as possible. Because what happened is, and the reason why, because, and this is the prophet, what we got to say about the prophet in the watchtower. He kept praying, and he kept, and what, going to the inner warfare in the realm of the spirit. And if, if, if he would have gave up, if he would have lost his faith, if he would have been like, but he was still there praying. When Gabriel came to him, he was still at the water praying. He was still on his face. He was still seeking the face of God. That's why it's important to push in prayer. You can't give up. Okay? So then we get the rules of darkness, right? Principalities, right? Then we get these powers, these influences. You know, we talk about these spirits, right? That's what's that's coming around 
And you see a lot of times in the Bible where, uh, uh, where, De where Jesus was casting out demons, right? Mm -hmm. and, he, and he said, some of these don't come out through what? Fasting and praying. He's talking about when there are the level of, see, you got these strong men and strongholds, right? Mm -hmm. Spirit of fear, depression, hurt, you know, all that stuff right here. But you know, the, the, when you start going up here, now, these types of things, now, if you look into uh, specific religions like, um, like voodoo, uh, um, voodoo is a religion, but it's also a practice as well. Um, and you look into like, uh, what's the word? Is it left? Hinduism. A lot of times, what happens is there are, there are things that they write down or there's uh, um, encounters they have where they become possessed by their God. And they begin to act like their God. Mm -hmm. Now, these are what we call strong. See what I'm saying? Thrones, hallelujah, or these things right here. Because when you're talking things like this, like the sun god, we're talking about spiritual weakness in high place in the heavenlies. That's why I like that translation said the heavenlies, because it's talking about in the second heaven. <clears throat> and when these things start coming down, it manifests inside of people. But you gotta see the type of people they manifest in. They just don't manifest in just anybody. There are, pe there are people in the earth realm that are high order. The highest order is, or in Hinduism, it's probably like a priest or something like that. Or, or in voodoo, it's like a priestess or a priest. Someone who is uh, the head, the master priest. Someone who's high above. They just don't, they just don't, uh, in, they don't just come and dwell in this any God. You understand there's an order to things. So when you are going, so that's why Jesus said some of these demons don't come out unless you fast and pray. Because you got to get to a place where your spirit man is so strong in the word of God and in the power of God that what? You are able to what? To cast out these things. And there are certain things that you don't fight against. Because when they gone, was brought, a God, who was brought in before God, God himself fought against Dagon. The Bible says they put Dagon, the Philistines put Dagon in before the Ark of the Covenant. And when they first came back in, he was, what, he fell out, and what, and they put him back up. Then he fell out again, he had his hands cut off. They put him back up. And then he fell down, and he was dashed into pieces. God is the one who will fight against, who fought against Dagon. Why? Because he was sitting on the throne. Because when you talk about a God, mm -hmm. you're talking about someone who's what? A supreme. Mm -hmm. Right? Who so-called called himself supreme, right? Mm -hmm. Who wants to act, who wants to try to occupy this, what, this realm of authority. And you've got to be very, you have to be very aware of what's happened in the realm of the spirit. Because if you're not, what you will, you will be fighting against. You'll be, you'll be trying to fight against these things. When in actuality, these things are not even these things are controlled by these things. You see what I'm saying? Right. The ruler of darkness is going to send fear. And things want to get you out of your place with God. Because what these, well, that's why they are like the little foxes. These are the little foxes. Nothing's small about them. Don't get entangled with these things. Because if you don't get entangled with these things, you won't get caught up with, in these things. You won't, because these things are just going to use the little foxes, what? To come at you and try to trip you up. That's why you gotta elevate your thinking. You gotta elevate yourself. You gotta get yourself out of the flesh and out of our 
because they we take time to learn these things in the realm of the spirit. We grow in the knowledge of what's going on. That when I come before God and I, as a watchman and I sit in the watchtower, I got to know what am I looking for? You got to know before you go into battle, you got to know what your enemy is. Before you go into the, what, the world, you got to know what am I about to come up against? What's going on? But, and this the thing is, we, we want to, we want to, we want God to do things, but God can't do things because we don't know the structure of why, of how he can do things. You get what I'm saying? Right. In order for us to get what we need from God in the earth realm, we got to go through the channels. We got to go through the process. We got to understand that we got to first, what? We got to go through the door. We got to go through Jesus Christ. Then through his blood, we are granted access. You remember what I was talking about when I was talking about the God taught me the altar to the train station? Mm -hmm. But we, in order to get there, we got to have a blood stamp in order to be transported, what, to the throne, through that gate. Mm -hmm. Into the court of God. We have to be blood washed. Because that's a step of approval going, okay, the angel of the Lord will lift you, but you don't belong here, I'm sorry, you can't come in. You see what I'm saying? And that's why we have to be careful that you don't become a lone ranger. You don't become someone who is like who is walking without a head, without a shepherd. A lot of times we want to we want to get to we want to get in God and we want to get with our purpose and we want to get into walking in our gifts and calling, but we ain't sitting under somebody. We're not sitting under a head. Because if you're not, God ain't gonna raise you up and God ain't gonna teach you these things is what you ain't got a head. Because you become a lone ranger and you just think you can just walk in and out of things. But that's illegal. Right. Because without a head, you don't have protection. You don't have the eyes and the ears and the mouth to warn you to go listen. You are about to go into some places that you don't need to go in. You need to come out. You need to slow down. You need to take your time. Because if you're not careful, what happens with a lone ranger is for a spirit is that a person who's walking is free without a head in the realm of the spirit is very dangerous because these principalities and these forces and rulers of darkness and things of that nature will begin to attack you and you over here ain't got nobody to protect you. Because you just free flowing in the spirit and you just, just up there doing what you want to do. Well, I'm a seer, I'm a prophet, I'm a this and I'm a that, but you ain't being groomed and under somebody. That's why you have to be very careful. That's why the order of the church is very important. Because a lot of times there's people come definitely into prophetic churches and they sit under and they what, get told that they are prophet or this or that and apostle and all that stuff and they want to immediately get up and start what, walking into the thing. And that ain't the case. You got to get groomed. Before the apostles became apostles, they were disciples. Discipleship is very important because if you don't know what this is, see, how many of you understood this before I told you? You don't understand what the, 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 the court of God, the, the structure of God is. You can't be up there walking in the realm of the spirit. I didn't even I didn't learn all this stuff. This is this some of this stuff is very, 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 very. And that's why I've not been able to walk in certain places. I've been learned. I started learning this stuff probably about a, you know, a year or two ago. But God had to teach me. I wouldn't say that. I started after in high school. Like senior year of high school. But like the depths of all this stuff. There, it's been something very new. It's not, and, and, and that's okay. I ain't nothing. 20 years old, I mean, I don't expect to know everything, right? right. But still things we got to learn and grow in. Right. But we have to understand that I have to, I have to sit under, I have to sit under overseer. I have to sit under my pastor. I have to sit under and learn from the Holy Spirit so that these mysteries in the Word of God that He revealed to me that I may know how to operate in the realm of the Spirit effectively. Because we a lot of people 
people who just go out here and prophesy. And because the gift is going to work. The gift is going to operate. But it don't mean it's holy. And it don't mean it's done right. You get what I'm saying? Things are going to happen. People are going to, and just because you're a prophet, and someone calls you a prophet, or someone calls you a seer or apostle, don't mean you get up the next day and you can start prophesying the fuck. You got to become groomed. You got to be, as the, in, in the Bible days, if you look at Elijah and Elisha, they had the school of prophets. And this is what this kind of like, this is what this class is. Now, I couldn't call it the school of prophets because y'all wouldn't understand what it was. So the Lord said you had to call it what? He said spiritual principles. Because that's basically what the school of prophets were. It was teaching them spiritual principles, things like this. Elijah was the headmaster of the school of prophets, and he was teaching the school of prophets. And then he handed down to Elijah. But they had to be groomed. They just went out just prophesying the Lord, but they had to sit and be groomed. Jesus did the same thing with his disciples before they were apostles. They had to be groomed. They had to be taught these things. And there was things that Jesus taught them that he could not, that, that John and the rest of them could not record in the Bible. John said it. Now he gave us that much. So we have to understand that you've got to be taught. Purpose comes, but purpose comes to those who are willing to be taught. You understand? Okay. Does this make sense? And I know it's a lot, and I know, and I'm probably, yes, I, about that. 2.30 mark, um, 2.30. Two hours and 30 minutes, Mark. So we're going to end because I am actually done. Ain't God good? Amen. I know it's going to be long. Amen. So we got any questions? Yes. Yes.
matter what, what, what part of the world you go to, they have these things. Okay? They have cell phone technology, whether they're unindustrialized or industrialized, whether they have iPads or not, or whether they have technology that's not just like computerized, but like technology in the sense of, you know, catapults. Yeah, advanced. You know, um, basically to deal with civilization. Education and government, and then government go kind of hand in hand. Um, but they have some form of this, whether they teach them how to weave uh, baskets. Or, and they have some form of government, some form of government. And then they have art, some form of entertainment, whether it's singing, dancing. They have some form of agriculture, whether it's planting, or whether it's shepherding, or whether whatever it is. And then they have some form of science, some forms of medicine or healing, or um, and sometimes science and religion go together, depending on which culture you're in. They have some form of military, they have some form of fighting, of an, um, they have some form of protecting themselves, defense. And they have some form of religion, some form of belief. If you agnostic, it's still a belief. Because you believe there is no God. You have hope, there's a belief. Thank you. So there's some form of each one of these. These are the seven kingdoms of the earth. Okay? Each kingdom, so the earth kingdom, right, has seven of these. Yeah. Okay? These are the seven kingdoms within a kingdom. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Oh, you can call them the seven mountains. Yeah. Um, you can it just... You know, the seven realms, whatever you want to call it, that's what it is, okay? So you have this within this, right? All right. So these seven kingdoms would be controlled by power. Okay? Okay, by power. And this boom. And that power, honestly, if we look now, we can look into... Uh, we can look into the art, perversion. Mm -hmm. You know, very heavy spirit perversion mm -hmm. in entertainment. You see what I'm saying? Yes. In in military, anger, mm -hmm. spirit of anger, very much rage, religion. We see that, you know. Hello. Mm -hmm. You know, we technology, perversion there too, and other things of that nature. In science, right. divination. Things of that nature. You know, education. Things of that nature. <laughs> There's powers influencing all of these kingdoms. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. So the gate, cause this is the 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 estate or the um, I guess the realm or the kingdom that you were talking about. This realm. And in, in between that realm, there's other little realms and seven little kingdoms, right? You know, technology education that builds on them. Now, people, again, you either work in one of these seven. Everybody works in one of these seven. I don't care if you do it, you know, you technology, you will work with infrastructure. So like architects. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Everybody works in one of these seven. In order for you to have a productive or a, a strong estate, a strong realm, you gotta have all seven. It don't work. These are the bases of society. So everybody works on one of these seven. So these powers, and your purpose is also in what you're called to, these seven right here. Which kingdom is God called you to? To be a power in. You see what I'm saying? To become a power there. To become an influence there. Right? He said, be the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. Right? Be light. So God has called us to these seven kingdoms. And so really figuring out purpose here. This is where really purpose comes in. What am I supposed to do on the earth realm? You gotta see which kingdom is God called you to. You gotta see, okay, am I called to this? Because again, not everybody is called to the five fold. Because the five fold is in here, but it's not just what? Now you have people who are full-time ministry, this is all they do. But a lot of people are called to the fivefold and prophets who have jobs in these other arenas. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So, so you don't just have to your job, your purpose is not just in the church. Yes. What is your career? Because you gotta have a living. You gotta give God will take care of you, but he also gives you resources. 
with this ring? That's a great question. We work with it here. And uh, so, you know, these seven kingdoms, and these seven kingdoms come from the, some seven major kingdoms that were what very strongholds on the earth, like Egypt, Persia. like Persia, Greece. like Greece, Rome. like Rome. Huh? Babylon, a Babylon, Syria. Assyria, and then us. Yes, today. The modern world today. Yes. The kingdoms the of the day. Yes. Right? Yes. So we see these seven kingdoms. Yes. And we got this, what, from Daniel, right? Yes. When he's talking about the different, the different kingdoms that were going to rise up. And he's talking about the leopard and the bear and you know, all those types of things that was coming up, right? Yeah. So that's where this comes from. Because every these, when these kingdoms rose up, they brought, they introduced something. Yeah. Right? They introduced something or an advancement in something. Yes. You know, they, they really were strong in this. And they were strong, so they represented. And you can even Google it, they represented this. Like Babylon brought in a lot of mathematics and, you know, calendars and all that types of things. Um, so we see what these seven kingdoms brought into the earth and what they were contributed. They represented some. And so the seven kingdoms of the earth, the seven, these are the foundation of every culture. I don't care if you're Native American. I don't care if, you know, African. Every culture, whether you live in tribes, whether you live in tents or huts, whatever, you have these seven. You understand? Yes. Okay. So uh, did I answer your question? Okay, so gates, so princes, palace, or at the gate, the apostles would be at the gate, and then the in, inside of that ram, and I guess that you can call these a ram right here. Okay, you call these ram, the gate controls ram. You see what I'm saying? And inside of that ram, you have the different dimensions. You get? This is just earthly right here. So we're talking about the earth realm, right? The, the kingdom of the earth. You have a gate, right? And then it, it controls this realm of the earth. And in that are dimensions. These different dimensions that you can operate in. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. And then you have a gate that's controlled by the apostle and the prince, right? Because they both have a what? A seat. A seat. Okay. All right, but then you know above that, right? You have these rules of darkness, right? right. They're the spiritual wickedness and what heaven. All right, and then because the rules of darkness are still going to kind of be on this earth level sense. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and then you have the spiritual wickedness in the heavens. These second are going to be heaven. above those in those heavens, second heaven realm. Yeah. You have those dominions that kind of like outside of that. That's kind of like military enforcement. You know, and then you're gonna have those thrones that kind of sit up there and go, well, this is, you know, because you gotta say too, you have the marine kingdom, which is dealing with the water, yeah. right? And we'll get into all that, but I'm just saying this is just an example. So a marine kingdom, someone that will sit on the throne there. You get what I'm saying? Okay, because the kingdom of darkness is like an overall thing, but in that you have little. All right, we understand that? Yes. Okay, you had a question. You good? Did I answer it? Uh, your illustration. What was that? I said your illustration gives it. What was your question? It, so, obviously, the kingdom of darkness can't control death. The kingdom of darkness cannot control death in the sense of, you know, the devil can't, or a spirit can't go to death and be like, you know, Go kill somebody. You see what I'm saying? Because when Satan wanted to what come against Job, God said, "What you cannot touch his, you can't take his life." Now, if you get into which you know, now we have Jesus, right? Yes. And we believe in God, right? But now, if I now if, I, if the devil, if I'm working in the kingdom of darkness, right? And I'm, you know, I'm, I, I, my father is, you know, you, somebody works in the kingdom of darkness and their father is of the devil, right? Do, can, they tell, can they tell death to come kill them? Mm -hmm. Yes. No. no. Right. Because, because God is the only one that can take life and yes, get it. That's right. Yes. 
You see what I'm saying? And like I said, death, death doesn't, like I said, death works for God, but it doesn't discriminate whether, okay, you're in the kingdom of God, so I can't touch you, the kingdom of God, I can't touch you. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So death is like that neutral thing that's just like, well, God tells me to go home. <laughs> you see? So he, he got, he just be one, he just be up there and just like, all right, you know, we're going to go here. I got, you know, this was on my list today. We're coming to get you. All right? So that answer your question. Anything else? It's a lot. All right, good. All right. I actually made it to the, the hour, the, the two hours and thirty minutes. So we're gonna close out the prayer, and we're going to uh, be dismissed. All right. All right. Father God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your word. Good Lord God, we thank you for what you're doing this season and the time of our lives in this moment. Lord God, we thank you for revelation, knowledge, and understanding. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that your word is going forth into power. Lord God, that it is going forth, Lord God, with a powerful force to destroy, Lord God, ignorance, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that the enemy cannot take the word that has been sown today in your people's heart. Lord God, that their hearts have received it. Lord God, with nourishment, Lord God. And then that their heart, Lord God, is, the seed is taking root in their heart. And their hearts, Lord God, will bear much fruit of the word that you have given them today. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that you have given them, Lord God, the grace to learn and the grace to retain. Lord God, all that which they have learned today. Lord God, we worship you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, we are dismissed under the power and the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen.